Well, it's Friday the 21st of April. We race in Kabeja where we at Fairview for eight races. We're on the turf and as always joined by Grant Paddock on the line. And I must compliment Grant for last week because we did the show together for Friday. And although there were good things, uh, if the betting was to be a guide, he did give us the confidence and it all fell into place. Well done last week, Grant. Those good things all arrived. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. Had a decent day for a change, and hopefully tomorrow for the punters it's going to go the same route. Well, let's begin in race number one, which starts off the bar port over 1,200 meters. It's a maiden juvenile plate. As always, Grant, I'll give you the horses that are in single figures. Number one is at even money. Number three at 11 to 10. There is some support for a first time a year called Joy and Peace. Uh, this betting proudly brought to you by Hollywood Bets. Alan Krieff's runner. That's been back from 2 to 1 into 16 to 10. Uh, firstly, you know, you got your ear on the ground. Uh, anything you heard of the any of these first timers? Yeah, these a lot of talk for this this first time of Alan Kreef's joy and peace. I believe it's the right horse in the race. Um, Alan's yard has been fine form at the, the last couple of weeks, and Rich is riding extremely well. A uh, lot of strong talk for this horse. The other filly, obviously, the favourite in the betting. I think uh, race time, it will be a turnaround. I think um, Joy and Peace will end up being favourite. Um, Amazing Colours has got to be a runner. I don't think that form line is overly strong, though. And uh, she just didn't have enough legs to see out that 1,200. She'll be a better horse for that run over, over this 12. But um, I'm, I'm going strong on this on the six-year Joy and Peace to beat Amazing Colours. Well, the Grant always spot on with these first-timer comments, especially when he hears something. So, six and one, if you want to play it safe in the first leg of the bar pot, or you want to go with number six, just watch her in the ring and how she goes down. If she behaves and she stretches out accordingly, then possibly she will be the right horse in the race. Race number two, place accumulator, 1,200 meters. Again, the betting, number one, four to one. Number two, four to one. Then we go to number 10 at 9 to 2. And uh, number 18, the Winter Lake Gavin Smith's runner. Uh, that's at 11 to 2. I, I want to firstly touch on uh, uh, Woodland Ridge, number 1, Kelly Mitchley's runner. And what you made of his two runs in Quebec uh, in on the poly and on the turf. Yeah, these, uh, he's, he's having his third run after rest is here. Um, Probably going to be cherry ripe for this run. Very good ride lo run last time out. Richard got off and he said, um, low flying, next time out he should win. It's third run third run after a rest. Um, he's pretty much spot on. I, I do fancy him to win a race like this. There has been a hell of a lot of talk for the, the two-year-old in the race, the Winter Lake. He had excuses last time. I come out of the same form line. He had excuses with casting a shoe. I've got a funny feeling that this horse is going to end up favourite on the day. Um... With regards to the 15 horse Principessa Mia, no talk on the ground. Uh, if I look at the breeding, she looks like she's probably going to need a trip, but it's probably going to be one to follow when she goes around the turn. That's why Richard's starting off with her. Um, and then Siberian Fox is always there and thereabouts, a solid uh, ATM for Zitzman. But I, I really do think Woodland Ridge has found the right race, and his biggest danger will be the Winter Lake. Are those two horses good enough for the, for the PA numbers 1 and 18? 100%, you're more than good enough. One in 18, and you could double up there. Some confidence from Grant for two horses there, which is excellent. Race number three uh, is the big one, the pick six. It's over 2,400 meters. This is an open maiden, and this is how they're betting. Number one, pop increase, 18 to 10. Number two, Lord Nelson at nine to two. Then we move along to number six, Joe Harmon at four to one. And it's pretty much, name your price, double figures, the balance of the field. I'm going to firstly touch on the source called Pop Increase, uh, because that last start, although well beaten by Medler's Tart, uh, Medler's Tart has since come out to run third, and I think also uh, win and run third in that, in that Eastern Cape Oaks, uh, Grant. Yeah, D's 100% with you on this one. This horse is the wrong price at 18 to 10. You'll probably get some 2 to 1. Uh, I think it's closer to an even money shot. Medless Tart form line is way too strong for this field. She won the Oaks Plate and then came out and ran third in the Oaks to two Cape Town horses. Um, very, very hard nut to crack this one. And a solid selection. Probably even a banker in the pick six. The rest of them are, are really battling maidens, the likes of Joe Harmon, Bella's first wave. And um, I know this horse uh, more for me 
having his first run in the province and putting up some decent work. She's had time to acclimatise and um, she could be a, a decent runner. But um, I'm solid here with Pop Increase. I know he's giving weight away to everybody, but um, that form line is too strong for this field. I just want to comment on Lord Nelson. I see Kerry Mitchley stepping this horse up in a big way when it comes to distance. Yeah, I asked her the same question. I said, this Captain Al May, Canford Cliffs, um, what's happening? And he's very one pace kind of a horse. That's why they put him straight in. He was in a 12 two weeks ago and he, and he, and he never got a run. Uh, they, they were just going to give him a warm up there and they've decided to go straight into the 2400. He's done a lot of round track work and a lot of lung work. Um, but he's, he's moderate D's and um, they'll be lucky. Uh, they'll be happy if he runs a place in a race like this. Very confident. Banker in everything. Race three, number one, pop increase uh, over this 2,400 metre trip. Then we move along to the fourth race of a 2,400 metres. It's a classified stakes. This is how they're betting. Very wide open. Number one at four to one. Number two at five to one. Number three at seven to two. Four is at nine to two. Six at six to one. And then it's ten to one and better the balance. It's seven to two the field here. On top is number three. Honest guest, it looks like a really competitive uh, uh, 2,400 metres in this Class E. Yeah, D is big problem this race. I can tell you that um, it's more like a field race than anything else. It's really, there's two horses that have done the trip, and that's Cape Bouquet and Ellis Island. I actually got a slight preference to Ellis Island. I think this, he's been in Port Elizabeth before, and he's run over these kind of a trips, and Lunga's horses normally have a very good run first time out here. Cape Bouquet also over the 2400 and the 2800 has done fairly well. But this is a really, really tricky race. Even in the place accumulator, you're going to need a couple of horses to get yourself through here. Honest Quest, never been further than the mile. He's found a bit of form. He ran to Brendan James and Cheriano. But, you know, from a mile to 2400, that's a big jump up. Maybe Richard felt something last time out and told Alan to put him in the 24. He'll stay. I'm not sure. Um, punters need to go wide in all bets here. And if I had to... Pick two horses for the place accumulated would be the seven and the eight, Cape Bouquet and Ellis Island. Seven and eight in the PA. Um, you know, often when it comes to these big stables like Kriev and Smith, we use the jockey as a guide. And I got really confused when I had a look at the jockey riding arrangements for Gavin Smith because he's got four runners here, numbers one, two, seven and nine. And he did me no favours on who's riding what. <laughs> no, not at all. I think it's, it's that kind of a race. Dude, that, uh, everybody, a lot of these horses are trying the trip for the first time, the Jasperos and Bold Strikes, and they haven't been these, this kind of ground. So I don't think the, 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 the jockey situation is going to make much of a difference. But he, he's got some decent jocks on all these horses, Gavin, and um, you know he, he, they'll come to the race as fit and well. There's no doubt about it. But the 2400 at Bearview, I believe there's a headwind tomorrow. It's going to be very testing. And then on to race number five of a thousand meters, uh, Phillies and Mare 72 handicap. And I'm very interested to hear what Grant has to say about Alan Kriev's run now. First, to give you the betting number one, six to one, number three, seven to one, four at nine to two. The runner in question is number five, Esther, at 18 to 10, seven at eight to one. And we got a five to one shot here at number nine, quick count. Uh, this Philly, the daughter of Kurari, she just raced seven days ago. Um, she will probably take a place. You know, we're recording the show a day earlier. If she does take a place, could she be very hard to oppose you? Um, Dees, it's very, it's very strange that Alan doesn't normally back them up seven days apart, especially with a filly like this. She hasn't got the best of legs. Um, she ran on strongly from last, last time out, uh, over 1,200, and they've stepped her back uh, to the 1,000. I know there's been a lot of talk. There's been money for her as well. Um, Alan will have a line through uh, Quick Count, who, who beat uh, Glass Shoes um, last time out. I'm actually in the camp of Glass Shoes over the five furlongs. She's very, very quick. She just needed her first outing here. And I also make I Like It Hotter runner. Um, I think she's, she's, she's fairly decent as well. I think a person needs a couple of horses here in the pick six. You're going to need four, five, seven, and nine. But in the place accumulator, four and five is going to get you through. Four, five, seven, and nine. And Grant on the fence at number five, Esther. I think the thing that's swaying him is that the seven days between the last run to this. So four, five, seven, and nine. We'll see how that race turns out. 
race number five. Race number six is the Pinnacle Stakes for fillies and mares over 1,200 meters. This is the way they're betting. Grant number one, four to one, two at 33 to 10, three at seven to two, four at four to one, and number eight is a six to one shot. We usually, you know, go to the, the, the best weighted column in these condition and uh, plated races, but this doesn't help at all. This horse, Monashada, you know, I know that she's quick. I know she races up handy. But is she a sprinter? I don't know, Dees. I'll be very honest with you. I, I don't think a Fairview 12 is going to be a shooter to her. She probably could get away with a Fairview 1400. There's a couple of very quick fillies in this race, the likes of Princess Debs and Angel Debs. Baubles and Beat also can get along a little bit. A tricky kind of a race list. I've actually gone for the four horse, but over the 1200 meters now, she ran a very good race to civil rights last time out in the 96 and running on strongly over the five. And now, extra 200 meters, I believe there's a bit of a headwind, so that's going to shoot her far. I like this whole stolen kiss to win it. Red Berry's done absolutely nothing wrong. She's, she comes off the same form line. And then the two Durban horses, which you probably know a bit more about, um, the likes of Mita to George and Mona Shada. They, they're probably the horses that are going to be in the back end of Cortez. But um, I like stolen kiss to take this one. Stolen kiss, there's some uh, good price uh, at the time of recording. That's a four to one shot. And Grant making it uh, much trickier than meets the eye in race number six. So all the best, guys. Race number six to try and narrow it down. But I think Grant's found us a nice horse here in number four, Stolen Kiss. Then on to the penultimate race, race number seven. And this is the East Cape Nursery, a listed race over 1,200 meters. And I must compliment Grant here because on last week's show, he said this will be about favorite. And he was spot on. Number two is at eight to one. And the horse in point is... Fairy night. He said this will start favorite next week in the in the nursery when we are speaking about one of the horses that was carded last week, and that is priced up at two to one. Number uh, five is at nine to two. There is some money about for Vision of Wonder Grant. Number six, that's from seven to two into three to one, and number seven at seven to two. You expected this horse to be favorite uh, for the nursery, and uh, do you think a two to one looks? a fair price to possibly have a go on this horse? Yeah, no doubt. These two to one is a good price. He'll probably be closer to 12 to 10, especially if the baby in the first wins. They come out of the same syndicate, the Halo syndicate, and if the first one wins, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of doubles and uh, finishing on fairy nights. He's a very smart horse. He's a progressive horse. He won very well. He was in receipt of three kilograms from War Launch. I personally think War Launch is a better horse over a five furlong. Uh, he tends to do a little bit too much, and with that headwind blowing, he could get caught out um, tomorrow. Fairy Knight's a horse that likes to travel just off the speed and then quicken. He's learning about racing. I think he's a really, really smart horse, and uh, I tip him to win this and win this comfortably. Uh, from Vision of Wonder, who, who won very well, but he's held by War Launch as well. But... Um, I think he'll, he'll, be, he'll be better over the 12, and he won by seven and a half last time out over the 12. And Watchtower did come out to win. Um, the improver in the race is the first time, he, well, the, the, the one horse has had a run, the two horse are bound. He, he's putting up really smashing work at home, and he's come on a hell of a lot since that first run. And he won't surprise me if he runs into the third or fourth position, but I do make this a fairy night from Vision of Wonder and then a bound. Fairy night, strong is Grand Paddock in race number seven to take home the 2023 East Cape Nursery, a listed race over 1,200 meters. And then we ended off in race number eight. It's over 1,400 meters. This is the way they're betting. Number two, Track Commander at 11 to two. Six, Pedro at 11 to two. Seven, Fiery Duke is at nine to two. Nine is at nine to two. Ten at eight to one. And then uh, Call Me Mr. Green Light is uh, been back from 12 to one into eight to one. Grant, uh, you know, how are we going to end it off here? I'm firstly going to tell you that I know that uh, Kelly's got two runners uh, here in numbers 7 and 12, and you're going to have to do a lot to try and sway me away from number 7, Fiery Duke. No, I don't have to do too much, these All you got to do is go back and uh, watch the run of, uh, watch the ride on Call Me Mr. Greenlight last time out on the poly, and then uh, we'll see about that. Uh, it's definitely <laughs> my value bet on the day. He got himself into all sorts of trouble. Then we fancied him on the day, and then we just didn't get what we expected out of the saddle. But um, 1,400, uh, long straight grass, be hidden away and come with a strong late run. Fairy Duke did nothing wrong. A very, very good first run, which was short of his best. He's now in his favorite trip. 
Muzi will have him well placed, I'm sure of that. But I, I think the horse that they've got to beat here is the horse pitch at the moment, though. He ran on very, very well over the 1,200 last time out. Only problem is um, the distance. Well, he's won over the 1,400 once. And um, with Richard in the saddle, he's one of those horses that are going to be hidden away and come with a, a power run. I do believe uh, Pedro's also a bit of a runner. He won in a distance short of his best, but fortunately drawn out at 11, and he's got that three-point penalty. But um, listen, I'm, I'm, I think the Mitchell Yard hold the aces here, and um, there's nothing much between the 7 and the 12. The 12 is my value bet on the day. And then in my pick six, I'll be adding picks of the moment as well as Pedro. Well, that is it. 12 to 1 into 8 to 1 grants value bet here in race number 8. But he thinks that Kelly does have a good hand here with number 7, Fiery Duke. He gives respect to number 9, pitch of the moment, and respect to number 6, Pedro. And I think that was a nice way to end it off, Grant. Uh, your suggested uh, bets for uh, the race meeting? Uh, Dees, my suggested bet is a win double, race 2, number 1, onto race 7, number 4. That's Woodland Ridge onto Fairy Night, and I think at 4 to 1 and 2 to 1, it's a, it, you're going to get a decent double. And I can see your value bet on screen as well, which comes up in race number eight. Yeah, value bet, no doubt. Um, the number 12 in the back, uh, Kelly Missley, or call me Mr. Greenlight, is my value bet. First four, I've battled to miss a place. Well, you set the bar high last week when I did the show with you, Grant, so hopefully we can follow up this week, Friday. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Dees, and good luck to the punters. Go well. Bye-bye. All the best to Grant Paddock and on behalf of the entire team at Gallup TV, I wish you all the best for this Friday. You're racing in Kabeka, Fairview on the turf. Find all the winners, make a huge profit. And until we meet again, you take care. Salani Garnishley.